compared to bigger cities, what makes Abbey feel so different? Well, sometimes we don't actually realise what we have in our own community. Sometimes it takes an outsider to tell us. Um, and I remember last year I was at a conference in Tralee and I met a guy from Northern Ireland and he had stopped off in Abbey Field for the very first time and he was talking to one or two locals and he pointed out to me that do you not realise how lucky you are compared to other towns and villages that now have no banks, no credit unions, no post offices, you still have all those three entities. But also he says it's a great place to live and work because if you wanted to live in Abbey Field you can park your car on the main street and you're only a walking distance from an auditorium style theatre and a question centre and award winning town park. Um, the 40 kilometre greenway, two well sought after primary schools and a state of the art secondary school. And maybe sometimes when it is said to you like this from an outsider, you realise yes, we are in a very, very unique um, position. And of course, being based in the in almost centrally located in the beautiful southwest adds to that as well. Um, again, that ties into the e-hub and co-working space that we're hoping will be open this time next year. Um, and we do have a number of people here who um, work on the support service for eBay, Apple, Microsoft, etc. And for other people who travel long distance from here into Limerick City or maybe down to Park City several days a week, they should now be able to do so within Abbey Field. And it's part of protecting the future and trying to put something in place for the younger generation as well. Norcan, we're here at Glorock Theatre. Mm. Uh, what's your role with the theatre company? I member the board, the directors, and after that, kind of, I do kind of like PRO work, as like we're doing here, and I'd be involved helping out in concerts and drama, local dramas as well, and stuff like that. So, and your, your general work, I help out at the Pingo every Monday night as well, I'm the, the number checker and that, which is a good buzz. It's something I definitely wouldn't have seen myself getting envisaged in, involved in here, but it's a very positive vibe of a Monday night, it's a great crowd and it's, uh, it's a very different crowd to, that might normally come to whatever play or concert, which is, a, which is a good thing to have the space used for, for and have it open to as many people as possible. Last Friday you had a concert here. That's right, Regina Nathan. Um, she would be a soprano. We had actually a grand piano set up there on stage. It was Michael Pugh accompanied her and Susan Brown from Bradford was the kind of guest soprano on the night. But it was, yeah, set out. We weren't kind of sure because it was, we had done a few concerts, but this was kind of a different venture. It was a, a kind of recital and you wouldn't be sure what crowd we got, but now it's sold out, so we're very impressed. And prior to that, we had Hearts of Men, that's the Oval, Trevor Sexton, and uh, Gerald Donnell, and a, a local girl, she had just done the Leaving Cert, actually, Rosie Donnell, played with them on stage back in June, and it was a sellout as well. So it's, the concerts are doing well. We actually had a um, musician who played here about two years ago, a Bat O'Connor. He plays regularly in Dolan's, the pub, they have a session there during the week, but he's, he said that about the space. Um, it was one of the best places he played in terms of acoustics. It is small, I suppose, compared to even the likes of Fires Gate or the Bell Table, but it's beautiful, compact sound here for concerts or gigs. It really is. That's one of the best things about it, actually, is the acoustics. Well, I'm a farmer myself, so in terms of a social outlet, it's brilliant. Me, especially winter time, meet meet people in evenings, and it's it's good as was on a cerebral level just to re remember lines and challenging yourself, and it's uh, it's really good if you can bring in people, and especially people who may never have been on stage, and just and especially to see people develop on stage, and sometimes people who come out of their own shell through it as well, and. There's lots of stuff backstage as well, and helping out in the night. But it's it's good, and uh, if it goes off well, play it. It's a great buzz. It's a great buzz, and generally they are a great draw for a crowd. That way, I suppose if you bring in a travelling group, you'll get a crowd, but nothing compared to what a local group will bring in. And again, if you get new people on board, they'll bring in people as well. Who might who never we had a girl. 
or a woman, I should say, who was with us last year and it was you know, like a personal fan club with her every night, the amount of people she was bringing in. But she was, she was just a very warm, gregarious personality and a very good actor for her first time on stage as well. But uh, yeah, and it's, uh, it's, a good, it's a good history of it in the town and tradition of it, the drama, so it's nice to keep it up as well. We were here last year, and there was a lot of developments going on, but a lot has changed since then. Yeah, yeah a lot has uh, moved on, um, I suppose, since the, the last year since you were here. Um, the, there's been a significant changes in regarding uh, planning for the future of the town. Uh, Biffy Community Council has worked well with Innovate Limerick. Innovate Limerick have bought the, what used to be known as the Provisional Bank in the Main Street in Abbeyfield. That now will uh, be turned into an e-hub and a co-working space. Uh, my understanding is that the interior designers are working on the on the final aspect of that at the moment, and hopefully that will be open and up and running this time next year. Uh, we also are going through a multi-million euro change regarding traffic management plan for the town, and the first stages of that is the buying of a building next to the old bank building on the main street. That will be a new car park and civic space which would help to open up the town, um, make it easier and safer for shoppers and people who just want to browse around, uh, whether it's during the day or the weekend. Um, since you were here last year, we have a, a project that we, a health project that we were working closely with Limerick City and County Council on, was shortlisted for a national award. Uh, we were delighted to go to Dublin to represent Abbey Field and the surrounding region uh, on that. Currently, every field is being shortlisted for pride of place, and we won't know the results of that until later on in the year when those national awards take place. And also, the local town park has applied for um, international uh, green flag status. I'm delighted to say that uh, we uh, have won that. And, uh, this is really good news for every field, and it will put us on the standard with other parks around the world. And for me personally. I'm delighted because it is huge recognition for the volunteers and the committee who have worked in that park over the last several years and ties in very well because this is also the 20th anniversary uh, of the Abbeyfield Town Park. The other piece of good news that we've received is that there are several million being pumped into the Greenway. There is a big project taking place in Barna for the um, opening up and the renovation of the tunnel that is there but also uh, Kerry County Council are, got, are to be awarded several million to extend the Greenway line from Abbeyfield into this door and hopefully from down the line or down the road from that then onto Trilly and maybe Phoenix. But that will be a significant step for Abbeyfield because the interconnectivity between Kerry and Limerick then will be at its full and we would hope to maximise the tourism aspect from that. Why is it so important for a town like Abbeyfield to have an active community county council, community groups? Well, I suppose it's very, very important for me as a local councillor in the area, as one of the councillors in the area, to have a new overall umbrella group that we can work with. Uh, it's great at this stage that we have all the various groups together under the one umbrella of Abbeyfield Community Council. And it helps me to get a clearer picture when we meet up. And at least I find now that by dealing with the community council, that we're dealing with a group that has the they have the vision for the town as well and it's, it's, it's brought in all the various aspects of business local business in the, in the area local people in the area and there's a major input coming from all over the area so it's very very important to work with the local community council and from the last time you were here which was last year the town has changed a lot and it will be changing a lot the town is changing there's a lot of exciting things happening within the town as I say the town is rich in culture which is heritage and we've made your plans for the area we've had a lot of changes over the last couple of years 
I think uh, with the way business is going, we need a major input into the town and we need more investment into the town. And this is something that I've asked for and I've been looking for the last number of years, was major investment. I think one of the things coming down the track is this new traffic management plan for every year. I think this is an opportunity for us to develop the town. But it's very, very important as far as I'm concerned that all the relevant bodies in the town are spoken to and we listen to them because this is a blueprint for our town for the next number of years. And I think it's very important that we get this plan right and let's get it as good as possible. So I think by having the community council on board, by having all the various interested bodies on board, I think this is the way forward for us. As I say, it's important for this town. I also think that we need a bypass of Abbey Field, I think, very, very important for the bypass of Abbey Field and Newcastle West, because at the moment, as you can see, the passing through the town, the town is choked up with traffic at the present moment, and there is no doubt about it, it's a hindrance on business and on passing through, through the town. So either a bypass or the distributor road is very, very important for Abbey Field. So I think this is something that we're going to have to push for. So you mentioned that uh, it's not just performances, there's bingo as well. Uh, yeah, bingo. What, what does the space mean to the town? Well, for a long time, as you probably know yourself, it's kind of hidden away, and it was, in a sense, hidden away because it is volunteer run. So, uh, luckily, recent times, we've had a few new people come on board, and they were actually, uh, two of them were responsible for those last two concerts, which is great. So, uh, it was, I suppose, it was a great space on people's doorsteps, but it was kind of hidden gym. So, and I suppose in the past, you had very good volunteers, but what happened, it seemed to go, it seemed to spike a lot of energy, a lot of events, and then it just dip, which is natural. But the last few years, it's kind of moved in more even keel. We've a lot of very good people involved and they've driven stuff. The bingo is a brilliant thing because of, it's a weekly thing. It's a regular thing on Monday night and brought in a crowd who might not normally come into the theatre space and that's been, and I want, it's a money spinner, it have to be because otherwise it, it, it wouldn't last any length of time. But, uh, so the last few years I think it's definitely, it's gone and I think it's a good news story in a sense for the town given that it's voluntary run, it is very professionally run as a theatre and the weather will be the next step forward, possibility of getting a part-time manager or something, we'll see, but but I think the last few years it has become far more part of the town and its surrounds. So how do you feel people are the real driving force behind it? The changes. Well it is, yeah, we have a great community groups here as I say and uh, it's, it's it's a good, it's a good town. Uh, we needed a bit of a lift, as I say. We needed a little bit of an investment in it, and I think things are looking promising. And I think this traffic management plan is one of the big things. And major, this is a couple of million investment into the town, and I think this will give us a lift. But as I say, we've got to bring all the stakeholders on board, and we've got to bring everybody with us and try and sit down and develop a plan for this town that's going to work. And that's the important thing, in my estimation. And do you think the Abbey Field over the next few years will be completely different to the Abbey Field you see now? I think it will. I think, as I say, with the plans that are afoot for Abbey Field, I think we should see major changes. And I would hope that we will see an increase in, in, in businesses in the town. I think it's important that we get more investment and more business people into the town and that we can see more shops. And the shops we have here at the present moment are more of an input in and better art here. I think, so. I suppose Tidy Towns is a very important group to mention. Um, they have the town speaks for itself. Um, it really is um, never looked as well. Um, great working relationship with every community council, the town park, the city county council. Year on year, I think the points being awarded to Abbey Field from the Tidy Towns perspective have increased continuously as a five or six years in a row, and that is um, proof of the work that they do uh, for our community. Um, very important also to mention uh, that Abbeyfield Community Council has got a fantastic working relationship with Limerick City and County Council, West Limerick Resources and um, Innovate Limerick.
and the fruition of that will begin to show in the next 6, 12, 18 months and further on. So some, some significant uh, progress being made and there is some significant investment planned for the town over the next number of years. And um, So we'll have a very different Abbey Field when we come out again in, next year. In three to four or five years' time, it will be a completely different Abbey Field than what it is now. And hopefully it will be for the better. Um, like everything else in life, if, um, as everyone knows, online shopping is killing every family business there is in every community across the country. Um, there really is no point complaining about it um, and getting upset. I know people do, but you have to plan, you have to grab it and say, how is it going to work for you? So you turn it on its head. You make the changes, and if you're not, you know, you have to be able to adapt and you have to be able to work your way out of it. But I'm delighted to say that those plans are now being put in place and we're, we're putting something significant in place for our younger generation which we hope will keep every feel alive and continue to bloom as it is now.